I was assumed by an old lady who, in talking about this matter, said, Life is so daily. That remark certainly spoke volumes about the pressure, responsibilities, and tension of daily life. Its persistent, instinct demand upon us is provocative of pressure. One wonders whether this generation of Americans is not so accustomed to tension that many are in the unhappy state of not being comfortable without it. The deep quietness of woods and valleys, so well known to our forefathers, is an unaccustomed state to them. The tempo of their lives is such that, in many instances, they have an incapacity to draw upon the sources of peace and quietness which the physical world offers. One summer afternoon, my wife and I went for a long walk in the woods. We were stopping at the beautiful lake Mohonk Mountain House, which is set in one of the finest natural parks in America. 7,500 acres of virgin mountainside, in the middle of which is a lake lying like a jam in the forest. The word Mohank means lake in the sky. Aeons ago, some giant upheaval of the earth cast up these sheer cliffs. You came out of the deep woods onto some noble promontory and dressed your eyes on great valleys set among hills, rock ribbed and ancient as the sun. These woods, mountains and valleys constitute what ought to be a sure retreat from every confusion of this world. On this afternoon as we walked, there was a mixture of summer showers and sunny towers. We were drenched and started to fret about it a bit because it took the press out of our clothes. Then we told each other that it doesn't hurt a human being to get drenched with clean rain water, that the rain feels cool and fresh on one's face, and that you can always sit in the sun and dry yourself out. We walked under the trees and talked and then fell silent. We were listening, listening deeply to the quietness. In a strict sense, the woods are never still, there is a tremendous activity always in process, but nature makes no strident noises regardless of the vastness of its operation. Nature sounds are quite harmonious. On this beautiful afternoon, nature was lying its hand of healing quietness upon us, and we could actually feel the tension being drawn off. Just as we were falling under this spell, the faint sound of what passes for music came to us. It was nervous high strong music of the jitterbug variety. Presently through the woods came three young people, two young women and a young man, and the latter was lugging a portable radio. They were three young city people out for a walk in the woods and tragically enough were bringing their noise along with them. They were noise young folk too, for they stopped and we had a pleasant talk with them. It occurred to me to ask them to turn that thing off and listen to the music of the woods, but I didn't feel it was my business to instruct them. And finally they went on their way. We commented on the loss they were incurring, that they could pass through this peacefulness and not give air to the music that is as old as the world, harmony and melody, the like of which man has never equaled, the song of the wind through the trees, the sweet notes of birds singing their hearts out, the whole background of the music of the spheres. This is still to be found in America in our woods and great plains, in our valleys, in our mountain majesties, and where the ocean forms on soft shores of sand. We should avail ourselves of its healing. Remember the words of Jesus, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while from Mark. Even as I write these words and give you this good advice, I recall instances where it has been necessary to remind myself to practice the same truth, which emphasizes that we must everlastingly discipline ourselves to quietness if we expect its benefits in our lives.